and bigger is always better. It really makes it more defined, so try and cover the entire screen. There are many trees here, but you have little colour. Return to the void, and I will tell you more. While it's true I don't have that much colour, I also don't have any other use to it apart from both blossoming trees right now, so I'm going to do that one more time. This one here seems to be biting for my attention. I'll quickly input my own little tutorial, if that's alright with you. This bar is very much like mine, and is essentially the tree's life, so if I fill it up until it starts flashing, then that'll be all the use I can get out of it at the moment, so always make sure that you have enough colour to fill the tree up to its max. Yes, your path will be like this, and you will give your colour drop by drop so others live. Don't you give away too much. Only take. It's too early for you to feed others with your blood. The way the sister says your path will be like this is a bit overly dramatic, as if I just made some sort of fundamental decision, as in between good, evil and neutral. This doesn't strike me as the intended meaning. I think I don't really have a choice in giving all that I can. And these trees look a bit sad even so. The colour forms the twigs and the branches. Yet the tree remains dead underneath. Am I falsely animating its appearance? Tricking myself into seeing something that isn't really there? Is it a reflection of a real tree in a real world somewhere? Who knows, but it's nice to speculate. Either way, it looks very pretty. And this is where cycles come in. When I leave and return, on cycle two, the trees will have bloomed. So I can wander around, get more colour, and plant more trees, and hopefully get a much bigger return when I come back. What do you know, I've got a plan. You must feed yourself with colour constantly. Take all you can find without pity. But I despair. Where will you find it? There are mere drops in my chambers and they dissipate as we speak. Quickly, collect what you can and never forget that time is killing you. Time is taking your colour. Time is your real foe. Bravo on the enunciation there. Ah, oh, that was chilling. So it's all started off quite predictably bleak. The mechanics are in place but there's very little colour available to me. As I travel to the reservation, I'm eating up the dwindling drops in my heart at the moment. Pretty much the only thing keeping me going is this tree I just planted. So let's just hope I work out to survive for a decent period of time in due course. Oh, well, not in due course, in quicker than due course. It hasn't really been brought up how I'm supposed to keep myself going for a significant period of time. And that's fine, it wants to establish a routine, since we're right at the start, and I'll always have to wander around picking things up with very little thought for where it comes from or what's to be its eventual purpose. I've just gone from Fog Garden to the Fireflies Reservation. There aren't many explanations why the various chambers exist and it's certainly not to be found in the naming scheme. This is a reservation. Predators used to dwell here. They're half-dead creatures, neither living nor dead. I think they appeared when random drops of colour merged with inanimate matter. But since the famine came, only the plants are left. Collect all the colour that hasn't dissipated yet, then return to the void. Predators? Well, they sound like something we should get involved in. They are soulless creatures animated by colour. They were made by colour, they feed off colour, and then they hunt it down. And we contain a fair bit, so presumably they'll be after us. And no wonder they left a place like this. Damp floor, layers of rotting floorboards. Though they are connected by beautifully designed physics defying stairs, even so. And I'm glad they made them curved, rather than straight, as they were in the concept art. Here is one of the handful of places with invisible walls. Just to stop you from falling off the most precarious of places, and due to their infrequent use, they are certainly a benefit more than they are a burden. I am the colour of your power and the same. Again, I seem to be getting the same types of colour, no matter which chamber I visit. Don't fear death. There is no death in the void. The gold in particular, 
Yeah, at this rate, I'm going to be overflowing with this stuff in no time at all. The reservations also have trees. They're okay to use in a pinch. They give a lot less out, but they require a lot less. So I might as well use this one. Remember the most important rule. Colour is your blood and your life stream. For any of your actions, you pay with a part of your own life. So when you draw yourself a life, there's only one rule that counts. Always. The more colour you use, the brighter the result will be. Yep, the trees give more output than input. And the bigger the input, the bigger the difference between them. That's pretty much all you need to know. As you can imagine, the first garden deals with relatively low amounts, but it will be just as important as later on in the game. The trees provide colour for several cycles after they first blossom, each subsequent one giving about half as much as the previous one. And this is good, because it spreads it around, it enables you to store some when you'll be full otherwise, and it's also bad because it requires you to head back there several times. And how both of these aspects affect the actual gameplay will be revealed as we progress. On my first playthrough, I managed to get a, about halfway through the game without knowing how to draw the donut glyph properly, which is extremely debilitating consider it's one of the most used glyphs. As she says, it is forbidden knowledge. Sisters, how many of us are still alive? It sounds as though the sisters are talking to each other, or at least attempting to talk to each other. They could be just waiting for a response from anyone or anything, and even then just about the most bleak of details. Is it strange that I can hear them all the way down here? I will bring you luck. In the furthest regions of this place, where only the nameless sister's voice rings clear? Anyway, this area is very nice in its own grotesque, macabre sort of way. I'm sure on my first run through of any chamber you'll want to marvel at the design and features at the Patchwork Moon. At least that's what it looks like. It could be an upper level, a higher plane, sort of crumbling away in the distance. So yeah, I'm going to give you enough time to look at it on the first run through. I don't really have anything worth spending on that tree, so I'll ignore that for now. So I'll need to go through each of these places many, many times in order to get everything as new colour is bled into the void. There'll be new gameplay elements, things to do and things to see, but for the most part I'll try and hurry through it as fast as I can. Over here is a glowing portal, a distortion in the fabric of time and space, that will send us straight back into the void if there aren't any pits or water around. There's one chamber left. Hurry. Danger is close. I can feel it. I know what you mean. I'm getting that sense too. So now I'm heading over to the pharynx mine, um, which I suppose is a reference to the area of the throat. I'm not too sure why. Maybe it's a bit windy. And looking down here, which is a good